Hi guys, my name is Layla Sophia. I am an artist and fine jewelry designer. If you like contemporary fine jewelry, if you like luxury handbags, all things interiors, and I have some fun videos for you. You guys, as every one of your favorite creators is doing right now, I am gonna put my own 2024 luxury wish list out there. But first and foremost, if you guys are new here, thank you so, so much for tuning in. I can't wait to see you in all of my future videos. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram at Layla Sophia Jewelry. I put out videos every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday, and so I cannot wait to see you guys in the next one. Okay, so as I said in my anti-wish list, did I just make up that term? Or is that a term that everybody knows? As I said in my previous video on the items that are no longer on my wish list, you know, it's been a big year. I, I already knew that I warned us very, like probably the first few videos on my channel. I only started a year ago, so I'm still a baby here. I, it was my 30th birthday. I knew it was gonna be a big collecting year for me. I knew that, but I just have been so blessed to check off a bunch of items on my wish list, probably more than I even thought. And it's the same thing that I always say, like I write down my wish list. I'm kind of always editing them. And the same thing with making videos, like I believe in the power of the pen, okay? So putting it out there, you know, really gives you a boost in making it happen. So long story short, I'm very, very grateful. But there are still a few items that I had yet to collect and a few more that have just been added to my wish list. So first and foremost, let's go, just go ahead and let's just go ahead and start with a bang, a bag that I think I want the most, the Civet Symmetry Pochette. I know, I like just discovered the magic of Civet. I think I like, I'm just, you know I'm all about honesty. I think I honestly was also a little bit judgmental of it at first. I saw it when it first launched at Bergdorf's like, she started her brand in 2020. I saw it like the month it came to Bergdorf's whenever it first was purchased by them. I immediately saw like their whole gorgeous little display and I was like, Hermes. And then I realized the magic. Like I truly realized, first of all, as I've said before, I did a deep dive on the designer. She's so cool. Like I probably just me being a jewelry designer, I understand the whole designer like behind the scenes vibe, like all the inspiration that it takes, all of the stuff that it takes, all the expertise, all the like, I mean, my God, years and years and years of planning and designing and samples and whatnot. And learning her background, she's worked for, you know, some of my favorite brands, including The Row as a designer and also Kate, and I think a couple more also, like she's magical. She's pretty brilliant and it is so brilliant to make a bag that is wildly affordable, that is like, the, it, in my opinion, my favorite Hermes bag, AKA the Kelly Pochette and the Kelly Cut bags, and yet make them affordable, make them so cool, give them like a little bit more of an updated, sleek vibe. Like, I totally overlooked the magic of the bag and now I'm completely obsessed and I have seen them in person at Bergdorf's and there's a new color, oh my gosh. I would have of course gone for the chocolate, which is a little, you know, a little bit less new than this next one, but I just got my glove bag from the row and that's like a pretty chocolatey, yummy brown. New release color called Mink. And oh my gosh, like, of course it's another brown, but like, you know, I just love the sea of brown bags that I have. And that one is so, so, so pretty. So she's like number one on my wish list. I think it's to, it's like, it's really, really, really a brand to not be overlooked. And now let's just go ahead because the reason why I want specifically the Symmetry Post-Shet by Savette and not the Symmetry Slim Potion, or is that how we call it? There's a reason because I probably would have said the Slim, which is so cool. Again, very Kelly Cut vibes, but because like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find this bag this year. This might be a next year wish list item, but the Bottega Veneta Andiamo Clutch, which yes, I've talked about several times, but like, is that not the most gorgeous? Like it's, she's stunning. She's stunning, she's stunning, she's stunning. Could you imagine the Savette bag in the normal size, pochette size, and then the Andiamo clutch? Like, oh my gosh, what the, like, that's the cutest duo of all time. Uh, yeah, so that, those two are very, very, very high on my wishes. The Andiamo clutch is not that much. However, like I, you, we just know that I love a hunt. I love a steal. I love to get something pre-loved and I'll most likely have to get the Savette bag new from store. And I really only allow myself a few of those a year. All right. I can't even believe I'm saying this. And we've all, if you guys have seen my, what I'm now calling my anti-wish list, 
it, you'll, you'll know what I'm about to talk about. So we know how much I love the row. I don't need to repeat myself for the umpteen thousand millionth time. <laughs> and but there's so many of you guys who are new here so I've been collecting and my mom's been collecting for a long time I'm newer my mom is the OG and long story short I love their bags I have seven I know it's a little bit excessive but I have like a really cool quirky collection and the Rel Margot was on my list a year ago it was on my list prior to that I did consider her for my 30th birthday and yet I the crazy again I will say the same thing it's pretty trippy when you really think like there must be some psychology that goes into it because like celebrities wear bags all the time and so I don't think it's celebrity driven like there is a moment that like it very occasionally it doesn't really happen that often when bags just make it into stardom and the Margot has is the next one. The Laura Piana extra pocket bag was the previous one. The Bottega Veneta Jody, the Balenciaga La Cagole. We all remember that. A Telfar tote. Like, you know, some sometimes just a magic combination of things makes a bag literally like fam more famous than itself. And the Margot is the new one. So I don't know. I, I think that's off, my, off of my wish list. Again, I'll repeat myself again. Sorry to be so annoying, but there's just something magical about the 17 size and my mom has a 17 inside out and it's magic. It's magic. It's truly magic. But my lifestyle is like, I do not need a bag of that size. I'm not a mom yet. I don't go to work with my laptop. I work from home. I'm primarily like running errands and walking with my dog. And so a bag that's just that vibey, that cool, that big, we don't need in my life right now. But the question is, do I need the 10? Do I need the 12? I know, this is a big question because I the, the 10 I think I overlooked for a long time. It's pretty magical, it's pretty gorgeous, but just something about the 17 has always spoken to me. You know, years and years ago, it's been a staple in their collection for such a long time. The question is, the 12 is a brand new thing. The 12 is a pretty good size. It might compete with my Kelly, but it's much deeper. That's a chunky, chunky bag. But I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the 12 comes with a strap. So just saying, could be a little magical. The other bag from the row, I'm not gonna lie, we're not gonna stop here. There are several from the row, but the other one that is a little bit more of a question is the Sophia bag, which was on my wish list again, like literally as soon as it came out. And then I went with my friend a year ago to the row to see it in person. We both were like, oh my gosh, we both were turning 30. I was like, that might have to be my 30 bag. And then I ummed and awed and I really debated and I got my 16 bag from Celine and that has kind of taken its spot it, as I knew it would like as was done by design but then I was like oh 8.75 could be like the cutest little rounding out my collection to have a little mini top handle bag I've gone so crazy with top handle bags this year and also that's kind of the mini bag not kind of that is essentially the mini bag category and with just having a top handle not having a strap option and so that's like the Margot and the Sophia 8.75 are on my wish list you know, if the right deal, if the right situation happens, you might see one on my channel, but they're a little bit more, you know, they're teetering. But two bags that are not teetering, two bags that I want. And I'll have to see in person because I still have not yet. This bag is like a new release, like this like week. The Row Abbey bag. Oh my gosh, I've been talking about it for like literally, I'm so ridiculous. As soon as it dropped, we know I love opening the Rose emails. They're like Christmas presents. As soon as it dropped as a pre-order, I was like, oh my, I found my new, I found my new wishlist item. The Abbey bag is so stunning. And we already know what I'm gonna say. The leather on that bag looks so yummy and buttery buttery and gorgeous. The question is, I'll have to see it in person because I, maybe I'll go this week and I'll report back because it's like, do I need that and the 90s bag? Because the 90s bag is like, I really almost pulled the trigger and I'm very glad I didn't because now I think the Savet bag has a little bit bumped it, like not bumped it off the list, but the Savet bag, I kind of want more. Also just pure functionality purposes. Like I think the Savet bag is like, looks really roomy. You can put a lot of stuff in it. And the 90s bag, let's just be honest. It's just gorgeous and adorable. And as soon as I saw it in person, I was like, yeah, no, okay. This might have to be on my wish list, but do I need the row 90s and the Abbey bag? I guess this one will have to wait and see in person. And speak of my newest bag, oh my gosh, which I'm, she's down in my room right now. I'm so happy about her. You know, I just got my, uh, I, I don't know why. The handbag gods blessed me 
with my old Celine by Phoebe Philo, of course, eyelet bag and my class bag just these last two months. They're both very like celebratory pieces for me, so they mean a lot to me. I'm so happy. And you know, sometimes like, sometimes you get a bag and it kind of like satiates you. you you're like, I'm complete now. And then other times that are a lot more rare, other times, which is clearly why I've fallen down the rabbit hole with Bottega Netta and The Realm, there's just magical moments when you're like, this collection or this designer or this house or whatnot, whatever special combo, you get a bag and you just kind of fall down the rabbit hole. And it's safe to say I have tripped and fallen down the Phoebe Philos Forceline rabbit hole. I always had my phantom luggage tote, but I don't know, something about the class bags are really quite incredible. And I tried talking myself out of them. And now the two of them, I just, I feel like this next bag would complete the trifecta and then I'd be really feel full and complete. I think the official name is the medium purse clutch bag. That bag in the tan, it would complete it. I have the white, I have a dark yummy forest green. And then in the, oh my gosh, like in the camel, the clutch, like there's one, there's one, by the way, I, I hope it hasn't sold by the time I'm, this video is going live, but there's one on the real real for like 1800 in black. Run, don't walk. That's incredible. But there is one like just taunting me on Vestier for like, I'm just under 2,500. And I, like, you know, that's, I just, I have, I have limits. And so if that bag somehow magically goes to 1500, I will pull the trigger so quickly. And that is definitely my like, okay, this is the bags that I've really, really, really put so much thought into that I really would love to see which ones I can add into my collection in 2024. And then there's a few more that I'm like, you know, if, if the price is right, if something just magically kind of happens. One being a Jill Sander bag, which I've been talking about, like why haven't I added a Jill Sander bag into my collection, hello? She's the minimal queen and so I'm clearly a sucker. I love them so much and I just have to find the right goji bag because I really, really love and kind of want a goji bag essentially is why this is on this video but I haven't found the right combo. I haven't found the right color combo or size combo, but a goji bag from Jill Sander is totally on my wish list. I also really, really do obviously love the sphere bag. And at first when the medium, when like the largest size just released, when I saw that I was like, oh my God, she would be perfect. And then I like, I really wear, currently I'm wearing my Bottega Veneta medium sardine bag. Like it's kind of the same. It's like the same dimensions. It's very similar. I really it, like that again if like somebody was selling it after for god knows why reason on the pre-loved market in a little while for like a really insane price I'd consider it but like I really have a bag that I love that takes up that category but a goji bag would be really cute and go in with my whole like very ladylike vintage almost antique class bag vibe that's currently happening and then there's two bags that are Slightly new, one is a very new, but one is slightly new, releases at Bottega Veneta, and oh my gosh. These I just couldn't spend full price on, but because like I just, I have categories like this in my collection already, but the getaway bag and the Boleto bag, is that how we say it? Those two bags are so, so stunning. I actually, the getaway bag like immediately stole my heart, but the Boleto bag? is kind of magical. Again, something like that. If then all of a sudden they end up on the pre-loved market for the right price, my goodness, I'd be honored to, to recycle and put that one into my collection or one of those. It's not necessary because I really just have pieces in that category in my own collection, but my goodness, are they stunning. And you guys, it has been my 2024 luxury wish list. Stay tuned for my jewelry wish list coming up soon. As always, we're gonna be bouncing between luxury handbags and fine jewelry, and we have a lot more interiors content coming. You know, I think it's time to paint the brick behind me. It's, there's gonna be, there's so much. There's so much that I have in store for 2024. And as always, I'm honored, honored that you guys are here with me, and I can't wait to see you in my next one. Bye, guys.